Well, John, the bass player in the soul band is really important, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, um, uh, do you, did you have any, uh, any, any uh, for instance, is Larry Graham an influence? Oh, well, absolutely. I yeah, mean, yeah. I grew up listening to all that stuff. Uh -huh. That's what was so fun about being able to join the band is... I mean, I had all those records. I had, well, in cassettes uh -huh. and, you yeah, know, yeah. in my repertoire. So uh -huh. it was it was just a thrill that I got to join in with these guys. Uh -huh. do, you, uh, do, you, do you slap like Larry did? I do. I mean, I'm a, I'm a Portland boy. I grew up here all my <laughs> life, you know. So I grew up watching Nate Phillips and Gary uh -huh. Fontaine. And uh -huh. um, Nate produced one of our first uh, CDs when I had a band with my sisters. And... Um, yeah, I, I was born and raised on that sound. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. that's you know one of one of the Portland things I think. <laughs> and Gary Fontaine's still going strong. Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. just saw him with new shoes with last new week. Shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, so how did you end up getting with Solvac, Vax? Well, uh, I was in the business for years, yeah. and then did a handful of records and got fried out on the whole thing, recording and all of that. Really. Switch gears and... Uh, Were you playing and producing or just playing? Uh, producing as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Doing records and uh -huh. um, then, you know, I kind of our last record didn't sell and it was just time to move on. And yeah. So I spent my time raising my kids. Our being? I was with a project uh, with Tracy Harris. She's another local Portland yeah, girl. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, and, you know, we dumped all of our eggs in that basket. Yeah, I understand. Uh, and it was, I thought it was a great record. Yeah. Um, but then I, I took a hiatus for a good 12, 14 years. Wow. Yeah, just did a little playing here and there with family stuff. Um, but spent time raising my kids and doing social work. And Didn't you miss it? Oh, you know, that, that's the thing. It's just, it's, it was a part of me that was missing. There's no yeah. question about that. Yeah. You know, not yeah. being able to use that creative musical part of the brain. Yeah, yeah. But you know, sometimes when you're like immersed in it, and it's and it's like you're living, and sometimes you get, uh, you know, overwhelmed with a pressure. Oh yeah. And oh, yeah. and uh, I, you know, like most musicians, I never yes. <laughs> got into that part of it much. <laughs> but my uh, sister Margaret mm -hmm. uh, sings with Solvax, yeah. and she has sat in with them for many years, on and mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. And uh, also Tim Bryson, which is one of the Horn players mm -hmm. used to be in my band back in the day, uh -huh. and uh, they were looking for someone, and and my name came up, and I turned Dave down the first. Did you? Yeah. Well. Well. <laughs> I don't think he actually even called me yet, but, but this Tower of Power stuff. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah. it's a challenging. It's a challenging. What is the thing. challenge? Well, it's complex music, and mm -hmm. and I have a passion for this music, and I want to play it right. Yeah. I mean, I want to yeah. honor it. Yeah. You, I just don't think you can slop through this stuff. And mm -hmm. I think the audience that comes to hear Solvax uh, not necessarily expects it, but it appreciates the time and effort mm -hmm. and the passion that we put into the music. Mm -hmm. um, so I was, I was nervous, and of course yeah. I hadn't played in so long. Yeah. But finally I had a great talk with Dave, and timing for me was good. My kids were older, mm -hmm. and you know I could play again, and... Um, and he was interested in doing original material as well. Mm -hmm. I love doing the covers and honoring the material, but with this fantastic band, yeah, you know what a great opportunity to to you know spark some new new stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I joined him about a two and a half years ago. It might mm -hmm. be going on three years. So you're a good so, reader. Um, not necessarily. I'm I'm one of those play yeah. by ear, really? play by vibe, feel oh. kind of guys. Uh huh. And uh, I practice really hard. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's it's actually, I mean, it's it's amazing because I've done some writing for the band. Our next mm -hmm. project is going to be four singles that we're working on. Ah. They're all original material, uh -huh. specifically designed for the band. Wow. And we we wrote them in this room actually. Uh -huh. um, we have Margaret, my sister, Mark Wyatt, mm -hmm. Tim Bryson, mm -hmm. some other influences, and um, it's really something coming up with these ideas and then watching Dave Mills, yeah. you know, throw it on paper. What is it he does? And, what is it about? Well, know, Dave, Dave is the heart and soul of the band. Yeah, I mean. Um, he's, he's the passion behind keeping it going. Yeah. Um, the, the footwork he puts in, the, you know, staying on top of getting everything out there on Facebook and Twitter mm -hmm. and all that stuff. He's, I, I'm really, I don't know when he sleeps or what. <laughs> 
And the arranging? Uh, well, everything I run at him, he arranges. Yeah. What, he, what he's really famous for is these charts he does. Yeah. Anyone that has sat in with a band, and, we, and there's a whole lineup of great artists. Yes. They all say, well, they're, they're Dave Mills charts. They're going to be right. Huh. Huh. And he really puts time into making sure they are exactly like, you know, either the record or... Yeah. Yeah. Because, of course, with five different horns, you got to figure out how that's all going to work. Yeah, really. That stuff's all way over my head. I, <laughs> I lob it his way and, you know... <laughs> So this must be, a, it. must be a fun band to be in. Oh, it's just a ball. It's yeah. just a ball. Yeah. And everyone gets along well, you know, um, everyone shows up. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, if you've been in the business for very long and you get soaked in sometimes, you know, people's lives happen and all this stuff. But mm -hmm. really, people show up, they're ready, and as soon as that first song starts, people are, are really on it. So this is another live at Jimmy Max. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is yeah. not, which is the first one was certainly successful. Oh, it was fantastic. It yeah. had Bruce Conte yeah. on it. Yeah, yeah. Who was amazing, yeah. too. Yeah, and um, this one has Chester Thompson. Chester Thompson. Yeah. I, you know, I've, I've done this all my life, and yeah. Chester on stage was one of my best musical experiences. Mm -hmm. There's just something about a pro like that, and just the person he is. Mm -hmm. It's just an unassuming, quite calm. He sits on that B3, and mm -hmm. eyes are locked in on him, and it's yeah. it's just amazing. There's one tune on here that, that was always one of my favorites, and, no, I, and I, mean, I used to play it on the radio when I was doing the soul music show, mm -hmm. but um, you never hear anybody do what you is, express yourself. Isn't that a great tune? It's a great tune. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's amazing about that tune? It always fills the dance floor. It's oh, like, yeah. As soon yeah. as it starts, people yeah. just start shaking and moving. Because they, the, they know that lick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you a funny thing. I struggled with playing that tune. Why? Well, probably, in fact, even the version on the record, I, you know, where you where you put your hand to play the, the notes, uh -huh. some, some strategies are easier than others. Uh -huh. After we did the record, I found a strategy that made it really easy to play oh, the no. bass myself. <laughs> <laughs> So now you know I, I zip right through it, but uh, so we'll be able to me. we'll be able to hear that at, at the CD release gig. Well, you, you'll be able to. I feel I can do it so much better now. But you know, isn't that how it is when you record? It always, yeah. Go, not uh, always, <laughs> not always, but sometimes it's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah, boy, yeah. I'll tell you, that's a great tune. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, it it must be really gratifying to, to. I mean, you're one of the few bands who plays all the time. And draws big crowds every time. It's it's um and it's been building. I yeah. mean, this this band's been around for eighteen plus years. Right. Some, well, and then all all of a sudden, out of nowhere, there's a soul music revival. It, can you believe it? <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> every time I hear something new on the radio, and it sounds like a seventies tune, I'm like, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, great. We know that sound. We've been doing that forever. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's been great, and in Portland yeah. music in general, it just feels like people yeah. are getting out again. And yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people like me who are just kind of you know parked away, didn't mm -hmm. want the smoky bars or any of that yeah. wackiness. Yeah. There's yeah. just I think a new revival in general in Portland of a lot of yeah. just yeah. really fantastic musicians playing great yeah. music. If we had to pick a tune, I pr I my my choice to to preview for everybody is is express yourself. But ah. do you have a favorite on this album? Uh, mine probably wouldn't be what everyone else's is. Um, no, I want to know what yours is. My favorite tune is the Prince tune we do on ah, there. Um, ah. In fact, I'm trying to remember the name of it. It's uh, called... Uh, Everlast. Yes. I'll tell you, um, I stumbled across that tune on YouTube, and Prince uh -huh. did that on, I don't know, Jay Leno or one of those shows, uh -huh. and it just, I mean, it punched me. I mean, the band was killing, yeah. it had Sheila E. doing percussion, yes. And, you know, Maceo on horns. Oh, I man. think it was Tom Scott and all these Jeez. just, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, Prince band. Yes, yes. And, and I, we were having, we were going to do a Jimmy Mack show. And we were mm -hmm. over eating dinner as we always do around mm -hmm. the corner. Mm -hmm. And I said, Dave, you got to hear this tune. And the moment he heard it and he's jamming through it, he's, he's like, we got to do it. And I was so thrilled. Because <laughs> not, not too many bands can cover a tune like that. It's it's got a it's got a deep groove because it's it's Prince and it has all these horn breaks and licks and then yeah, it breaks yeah. into like a, a salsa thing for me with that lead guitar so you know it's 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 one of my favorite yeah. tunes because yeah. it's it's a bit newer yeah. it's it's got a total vibe and again not too many bands can 
hit that tune, especially the way we do. Yeah. Well, uh, that tune will be will appear just below this screen right here. Okay, excellent. Thanks a lot. You know, and good luck with the album. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for coming.